and they decide that it's sexual assault because the girl had been drinking. Even yeah. though the guy had also been drinking, it's sexual assault. The guy gets kicked out of college. In simple terms, rape culture is um, any um, society or culture that naturalizes violence against women. Rape culture is when we create an environment that um, is almost, not almost, but allows it um, and perpetuates the fact that it's okay. And I think a lot of people will say, well, we don't do that. Um, but we do in, in ways that sometimes we don't always notice, right? Because when we look at sexual violence, it's on a spectrum, right? So there are behaviors such as catcalling, uh, when we make assumption about people's bodies, right, about what they want sexually and not asking, um, that's rape. Rape culture is, uh, is the most difficult component of all of this in that we really, when we look at violence, we have to look about how that has occurred over time, over history, systemically, um, and in terms of gender-based violence, that has a lot to do with what individuals learn from birth. Well, this is America, so. <laughs> well, actually something I wish, you know, more parents and students understood is if you have a number of zero sexual assaults, that either means your school's obviously under-reporting it, or it means students aren't comfortable coming forward. So I think zero sexual assaults reported should be a red flag, not and something that they should right. broadcast. And something like 40% of colleges, right, I think if I remember right from the film, report zero percent. They don't have a rape problem. Still, it would be my guess that about 60 to 70 percent of reports go unreported. But what I can tell you is that in 2014, for example, um, we had an overall report number of 17 incidents. So that's combined with sexual violence, um, which would be rape, uh, sexual assault, sexual discrimination, sexual harassment. This school year, so fall 2015 and spring 2016, we are currently at 81 reports. Um, I went to see my victim's advocate and in that meeting, we were just talking. She was like, we just wanna let you know like there's another victim from him. It's my pleasure to announce the 2013 Heisman Memorial Trophy winner, Jameis Winston, Florida State University. Is it hard for you to believe that this has all happened? I kind of just want to know, like, why me? It doesn't really make sense. He won the Heisman Trophy, and the sad thing about that is that the world of college football didn't hold him accountable for the kind of person he is off the field. is to actually believe um, a victim when they initially tell you that they've been sexually assaulted in any form because when you believe them then that makes them more comfortable and wanting to actually seek justice for the things that have happened to them. Um, I've been doing this work for about almost 19 years now and my mission in it is to try and get men to talk to men about their violence against women. If men talk to men about it, they pay much more attention than they do to women. I know that from experience. Well, first, I think that the onus is on the perpetrator. Only the perpetrator can prevent uh, sexual assaults and rapes. However, the rest of us do have a role, whether it be education, believing, supporting, or standing up 
uh, when we hear these things are happening or to protect a reporter. To change that culture one step at a time, one interview at a time, one class at a time, one mentorship at a time, um, one step up bystander intervention training at a time. The best step up that you could do would be the little moments, you know, the little things that nobody thinks about. Like uh, situations like with me and Rimble, if I really wasn't okay with that, some most people would have laughed because I was, you know, that wasn't serious. And we're going to be talking about serious step up moments where people actually get hurt or a child could get taken from their family. But don't forget about the little ones either. The little moments count just as much as the big ones. The other thing is, is to point out what's reality and what is, what's reality and what isn't. Uh, because and you watch movies and that sort of stuff, that's, uh, it's all made up, it's all fictionized and all this other stuff. So I think part of it is, is helping students see that. You know, you see it in magazines, you see it on social media, but all of it's not necessarily real. And I think some students think that's, that's the reality, that's what's out there, and that's how people react, that's how a man should react, or that's how, and I think part of our job is to say, no, that's, that's not reality. This is not how things really are. I think a big way to combat it is just talking about it with people because a lot of people don't realize A, that it's a thing and B, that they may be part of it in some way, like either implicitly or just saying hurtful or negative and sensitive things. The title of the course, though it's been tagged the weekend course because it happens over a weekend, um, is Sexuality, Power, and Relationships. So the idea of that course is to, number one, the thing that's really unique about that course is that even though I'm the instructor on record, students don't learn from me the whole weekend. Um, they're split up into small groups with peer educators, so they're learning and having conversations with each other. So that's a huge component of that. That's not something that we're getting in these normal classroom settings. So I think that's, that's what's transformative about that experience because you're sitting with your peers and you're having conversations about really important things that you never have conversations about. Um, how many of you, regardless of the reason why you're here this weekend, can give us a commitment to be present and engaged the whole time? <coughs> So we're working really hard in that weekend to create a community in that classroom so that people feel safe. The importance of this weekend is that the focus of this class isn't just about you learning something, it's about you having an experience. So that even you, those people who took this class just to get one credit to pass, leave feeling more enriched, leave feeling like this was worth 15 hours of your time. Because the idea is that what you are learning in here is that you will hopefully take out into your day-to-day -day life, in your jobs, in your future endeavors, and that you will become stewards of change not just on our campus, but in wherever you are or wherever you go. So Take Back the Night is a space where survivors of, or victims, however you identify or don't identify, because um, some people don't identify as either of those. Um, a space to share their stories. Um, so we have this speak out where you can anonymously share your story, but also um, showing survivors or victims that there are other people who support them.